So how do we manage these expectations with buyers? And then I'll talk about sellers. So active buyers definitely have more options, less competition. However, my experience in the last several months has been they're being super picky. The ones that are wanting to buy. I mean, this is the reality. you got to find the people that want to buy and sell. I just mentioned most people that we run into are saying, I want to talk to you, Jan and Cosmo. Uh, however, I'm going to wait right here until the prices drop even more and the interest rates go back to 4%. I wonder how many people are hearing that. You know, we'll talk about that in a moment here, but I really do think that that is what all of us are hearing in markets that are having these fluctuations. So here's the big question to you. Are you able to explain the opportunities to purchase now? Can you explain buy downs and negotiating and seller concessions and what may happen if they wait? Like if everybody's waiting to jump back in the market, then what's going to happen? And because this is my this is my talk track right now when I talk to a buyer. I speak to a buyer that tells me this and we dive in. Everybody's got a different story and different goals. So you have to you know, gauge your conversation with buyers. But this is what I truly believe right now. If someone, I think the best opportunities in my markets that I cover right now are right now. And here's why, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer. If it's true that everybody is kind of waiting, many, many people like yourself are deciding to wait and sit on the sidelines until prices come down further, and the interest rate drops. So let's just say 70% of people that want to buy are doing that, like you. So let's say that eventually, I don't have a crystal ball, so I cannot predict exactly what's going to happen. I Here's how I track the information. Here's how I, you know, I'm up to speed with it. And if you are a student of the market, then you can really talk real and show them data and not just share your opinion. But if, if, if everybody's going to wait, and that event happens, maybe it's next quarter, first quarter of 2023, second quarter. What's going to happen if everybody jumps in at whatever the given time is because the interest rates are predicted to be in the fives you know, by um, most experts by next year, maybe by second quarter next year. All depends on what happens with inflation and the Fed, et cetera. But if everybody jumps in, what's going to happen, everybody? There's going to be more competition. We're going to get back into potential bidding wars on good properties, more bidding wars. Good properties right now that are priced right, that are pristine, still sell, and they still sell with multiple offers. So I personally feel there's an opportunity here to buy, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, because there's not as much competition. Let me give you the examples of the last three homes that we've helped buyers get into and give specifics about how much off the price you got, seller concessions that you got, how you were able to get. I'm doing a transaction right now representing a seller in Florida where we had to bring the price down twice to get into because they put it on the market right when things were changing. And we dropped it twice and a seller came in another 10,000 below. This is about a 795 price point. We ended up selling it at 755, but they came in lower and they asked for $14,222 in concessions, which equals the 2-1 buy down. That is the kind of deals buyers can get right now. Is that going to be available for long? I don't know. And nobody really knows. I just know that that's the reality of what it is right now. So that's setting expectations with buyers. And then on the seller side, if you're dealing with sellers, it's getting a little bit better because we've already had this market shift since about May or June. It takes time to educate sellers who are, who jumped on the market to say, wow, I might have missed a, the, the, a peak. We only know when the peaks and valleys of a market is after it happens, right? And so we're going through an education process. More buyers now, more sellers now, if you, if you talk to them, are going to be a little bit more realistic because they're talking to their friend who sold their house six months ago and got 50000 over appraised value, right? That's not the market now. So buyers have choices. They have the upper hand in negotiations. There's less overall demand. The interest rates are higher. We have to talk about pricing. And then I will show you how we can look at, uh, give you some ideas around price reductions to be able to demonstrate what you're talking about. But I, here's the opportunity for a seller who wants to buy. Everybody wants to sell high and buy low. And you cannot do that together. If we just, if we were, if you were talking to people that didn't want to sell their house a year ago, the main reason they didn't want to sell or six months ago when maybe it was the peak in your market, 
it was because there wasn't enough inventory. They're like, where am I going to go? I have this low interest rate. And that's what they're still saying, by the way. However, if somebody really wants to sell and buy right now, what a great opportunity. Now you could sell now while we're still have reasonable equity that has just had a bit of an adjustment over these last two years of crazy gains. And Mr. Seller, you can become Mr. Buyer and go negotiate, which you could not do six months ago. So those perceived losses, some of those losses that you're worried about because you didn't sell your home six months ago, we can make up. We wouldn't have been able to do that six months ago. So you see, it's just being able to discuss what's happening in the market and look at where the opportunities are. That's my personal feelings about where it's at. And, and I really think it's all about being able to know what's happening and adjust before everybody else is. Change is constant in life and definitely in real estate. So when you can change your approach to things and your mindset and your attitude, then you're ahead of the game and you're the person, the real estate professional that's going to be here while you watch a whole bunch of other people get out of the real estate business, in my opinion, in the next few months, because they don't have what it takes because they're going to walk around and moan and groan about, oh, it's too hard. I, I can't, you know, the, they're going to blame it on the interest rates and the this and the that, right? Right. 